Well, one thing you're going to realize, foremen are a nuisance when you're back in the rear. They give you shots, they uh, give you pills, whatever, but when you're on in combat, foreman's your best friend, and I found that out uh, as I'm get around the Marines, they, they seem to have this special feeling about Corman. They don't want to mess up, you know, piss you off or whatever, because they know that they might need you later. But I, I was uh, sent over to Vietnam from Camp Pendleton uh, to uh, 60, 1967. I, I joined up with 1st Battalion, 9th Marines. First job was up on the DMZ at Contian. The hill seemed to have an attraction to incoming. I think we had 500 rounds average a day, something like that. And then it, certain days went up to 1,500 rounds. So you were kind of just looking for your next place to jump. You never really just walk somewhere. It was like you walked to the, this hole and then that one and then that one and that one and you found your way across. But uh, the, the whole thing was pretty daunting and people were getting killed and I kept getting promoted because the guy above me was getting killed. So now I started thinking, you know, this promotion business and then promoting to get to the next guy to get killed, I probably am going to get killed. And then it, it kind of tri um, progressed to the point where I knew I was going to get killed. Now, of course, that was wrong because I'm here, right? But I had this idea, I'm going to get killed, so, okay, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. And I actually, uh, I assumed I was going to get killed, and I went through my whole tour of Vietnam. I went through the uh, thing at Quezon, and uh, some hellacious stuff at, uh, at Hill 64, outside of Quezon. And basically, I remember the, I mean, the, we're, we're talking about perseverance. When, when you're in that situation, you don't, you don't have anywhere out. You can't go anywhere. So you're, you're there and, and basically you're wanting to do your job. There's a sign on the, uh, the, the hospital there at Da Nang. And I had to do a medevac with the, with the Marine two from Quezon to Da Nang. And we, we were pushing him through the doorway and there's a sign over the door that says, pain builds character. And that's not much solace when you're suffering, but, and I think there's a scripture that says also, perseverance builds character. And I don't really understand that scripture that much. I think maybe somebody else could explain it, but basically I think what it means is if you just hold on and you, you keep going, it develops something in you. Now, the Marine Corps is really good because it teaches you about pain and, you know, being miserable and feeling miserable while you're going through your training. They, they do put you through a lot of tests and they wind up, they wind up getting you to the point where you want to give up and then they're yelling at you, don't give up, don't ever give up. And, and you find after, you, after you've been trained with that for a while, that, yeah, you do get this attitude in you that you shouldn't give up. So even when you're wanting to give up and you're feeling like it, you don't. And that, that's a really good quality of the Marine Corps. I, I really am impressed by that. One of the uh, side effects, of course, you know, PTSD, that was a, a nice ben side benefit of going through this stuff at, uh, in Vietnam. But uh, I wound up getting cancer from Agent Orange. And the the side effects of that, I, I, I wound up uh, in, well, let's see, 2007, I got this condition that my local doctor just said was viral bronchitis. And it kept getting worse and worse. Finally, my friend said, get to the emergency room. And I get to the emergency room, they said, it's a good thing you came in, you had about a week to live. Well, I went through about eight months of chemotherapy. And I, they even flew me up to Seattle for a bone marrow transplant. 
And what that is, is they, they harvest some of your stem cells and freeze them, and then they proceed to give you a chemotherapy that's going to kill you. Now the advantage of killing you is it's all, also hoping that they're going to kill the cancer. So then just when you're just about dead, they give you your stem cells back, but the process is so devastating that you, you, you can't believe how much uh, pain and, and uh, problems you go through. I remember feeling like my parts of my body were floating away. I don't know, it was weird, delirious stuff. And, and um, I had to just pound on my chest and said, I'm, I'm right here. And I remember also saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, this is so, it'd be nice if you could just go ahead and let me go and go to heaven, wherever, you know. I, I, um, it wasn't the Lord's time for me. So anyway, you, you go through it. Well, another side effect was in 2009, I got all my injections for polio, you know, measles, mumps. You had to get all those again because your immune system is wiped out. Well, I got chicken pox from my injection. And it wasn't just normal chicken pox, it was chicken pox on steroids. So I wound up in the VA hospital San Diego for a month. And the chicken pox had gone into my digestion system. And also, uh, well, all these other infections as a result of it. So I, I asked the doctor, I said, am I gonna make it? And he didn't say yes, he just said, well, we're gonna do everything we can. So that wasn't that reassuring. But anyway, I, I got through that, and I guess the, the point of it is, you, you have in your heart something that God has put there, and that is to, to persevere. You, you want to live. If we didn't want to live, we would all be killing ourselves off after every little trial came. But there's something in us that says, keep going, keep pushing. And so I kept pushing, and I, I'm still here. I'm, I'm seven and a half years in remission. And I'm glad to say, uh, I'm glad to see you guys. You're still here. You're, you're on the way. I brought a... Uh, I brought a thing that I printed up. This is in my in my office. I have I have two things. One is a sign that says it's uh, Winston Churchill, and he says, "If you're going through hell, keep going. Don't stop." <laughs> and I I brought a few extras of it because I know that this would be good to put up on your uh, up on your wall somewhere. I have one in my office. There's another one. It's a photo or picture of a, a bird with the frog, you know, almost swallowed. And it says, don't ever give up. He's got his hands around the bird's throat, choking the bird as he's being eaten. And I think that's how I felt at different times. And, uh, and I keep this up in my office to remind me, don't ever give up. Doc, Doc, comparisons, I mean, like what he carried, just like a chisel and a, you know, <laughs> a bone saw. Yeah, with a mallet for anesthesia, compared to what you have now? Uh, <laughs> or are you an RP? RP. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's right. Any Corman in the house? No. Yes, sir. Hey, Doc, I'm sorry, I missed when you served and where? I was, uh, 67 and 68 in Vietnam uh, with uh, the corpsman, uh, first platoon corpsman of Alpha 1-9 and then later became senior corpsman. So I, I was in charge of uh, 200 men. I had eight corpsmen working for me. And uh, we, you know, one of the things I had to do was go around to the different corpsmen and find out what they needed to keep the medical situation going to get the right uh, supplies and so forth and uh, one of the things about caisson I, I just remember if you've ever been near a b-52 drop uh, they were doing three planes every 90 minutes around the clock and they were like you know 10 miles away and then they kept 
getting closer, five miles away. And one time I heard they even got within a quarter mile. Now, if you get a quarter mile away from three 52s that are loading, unloading all their bombs at once. Arc light. At the arc light, yeah, it lights up the sky. And it's just the most beautiful thing. And actually, it's in terms of the terror factor, it's worse than any income you'd ever go through being near B-52 drops, because the, the ground rumbles like a 7.5 earthquake. You're literally just bouncing. And the noise sounds like a freight train coming down into your bunker. And uh, it's just exciting. It's, if you want excitement, you know, that, that would be the place to volunteer for. Get, say, I need to get near some B-52 drops, you know. But, um, yeah. You had Marines die in your arms. I did, and uh, it's not a good feeling, and, that, and you had to tell them that they were going to be okay, but I'll tell you one of the things, uh, the Marines, they were, they were much more open to the Lord than we are here. And when you get into combat, you'll find that you, you tend to have a little more openness to God for some reason. I'm not sure what, but they a lot of times would would just, you know, they would want to know more about the Lord. And, and um, one of the things I did, and I was a Christian at the time, I was able to help a lot of guys. And I know it was the last thing that, that they got before they died. I, um, I think it's, it's something that's hard to explain, but, you know, the, it's, it's a hard thing to talk about. Thank you, guys.